part, His Excellency Gary Conan, Prime Minister of the Republic of Haiti. I am reminded of a commitment made before the world. Last year, at the United Nations General Assembly, I pledged that Kenya would lead the international response to Haiti's urgent call for support in restoring safety and security for the Haitian people. I urged then the UN General Assembly to establish a framework to enable this vital mission to be undertaken. On 2nd of October last year, that framework was realized when the, Unite, when the Security Council authorized the deployment of the multinational security support mission to Haiti. Kenya immediately answered this call. On 24th June this year, I had the honor of flagging of the first contingent of Kenyan officers, followed by a second deployment shortly thereafter, bringing the current total deployment to nearly 400 security officers. Already, this mission is showing positive results, restoring hope, and providing a glimpse of stability that lies ahead. Our meeting today marks a significant step as we reaffirm our commitment to peace, progress, and partnership. I am pleased to announce that an additional 600 Kenyan police officers are completing their pre-deployment training and will be ready for duty next month. Our officers are working closely with the Haitian National Police to restore order, protect critical infrastructure, and create safe spaces where Haitians can thrive. In collaboration, they have already recaptured key sites, the General Hospital, the National uh, um, Palace, and other critical infrastructure. This process stands stuck in contrast to the uncertainty that once prevailed around any meaningful deployment in Haiti. I commend the demonstrated professionalism of the MSS and urge them to remain steadfast in discharging their responsibilities. The conduct of MSS is a testament to the integrity of Kenya's security deployment within the country and around the world, which I am certain is one of the reasons Kenya was yesterday elected to serve at the UN Human Rights Council for the period 2025 to, 2020, to 2027. When I visited the multinational security support mission in Port-au-Prince on September 21st, this year, the commander and his Haitian counterpart spoke of the positive momentum that has weakened the stronghold of gangs over the country and generated of optimism for better days ahead in Haiti. Today, with Prime Minister, we discussed ways to sustain and build on this momentum, and this is the battle that we can win if our friends stand resolute in solidarity with Haiti. The conversation I've had this morning with Prime Minister Cornell paints a brighter future because between me and him and our security people, we believe the situation in Haiti is winnable. And we are asking the international community to match their commitment, their pledges, with the necessary action for us to be able to complete the task ahead of us. Kenya and Haiti, therefore, stand united in calling on the international community to urgently rally behind this mission. And the operation word here is urgently. We have a window 
of success that is evident from the operations that have been carried out already. And without wasting time, when resources are made available, there will be demonstrable progress on securing critical infrastructure, critical spaces for people to return to their homes. I must congratulate the President of El Salvador, who a few days ago signed into this um, program and is providing critical support. I will be speaking to him later for us to build a bigger collaboration with Bahamas, CARICOM, Canada, and of course the U.S. in driving this multinational security support mission towards the intended mission that we all set out to achieve. The adoption by the UN Security Council of Resolution 2751 on 30th September 2024, extending the term of the multinational security support mission by another one year, signals strong global support, but however, words and pledges must be merged by concrete action. We therefore strongly implore our global partners to accelerate their contribution to the personnel, logistics, and financial resources necessary to sustain, expand, and complete this mission. Beyond security, we have also identified areas for collaboration in trade, tourism, cultural exchange, and to achieve lasting change, we must invest in economic growth and social connectivity. This is why Prime Minister Cornell and I discussed concrete steps to enhance trade and boost investment between our two nations. We envision a future where Kenya and Haiti, as well as the larger Caribbean region, are linked not only by shared values of democracy and rule of law, but also by dynamic economic exchanges to create jobs, spur innovation, and uplift communities. As we work together, we reaffirm our commitment to multilateralism as a powerful force for good. However, we recognize that global governance structures must evolve to reflect today's realities, our shared challenges from climate change to food security demand institutions that are resilient, responsive, and equitable. Kenya and Haiti believe in the need for reform that realigns our institutions to serve the needs of all nations, ensuring a more just and sustainable world. In this spirit, we also champion the strengthening of ties between the African Union and the Caribbean community, regarded as the sixth region of Africa. By forging these alliances, we seek to enhance South-South cooperation and build a more interconnected, prosperous, and resilient uh, global community. In closing, Mr. Prime Minister, I extend my gratitude to you for your visit and for the spirit of collaboration that has characterized our discussions today. Haiti is a great inspiration to Africa you became the first black republic in 1st January 1804. That's just more than 210 years ago. And because you inspired many countries with your own struggle for independence, believe in the rule of law, believe in freedom and democracy, many African countries followed in Haiti's footsteps. And today we have a free Africa that has the potential to work with Haiti, even in this mission. There are many African countries, um, Your Excellency, who are ready and willing to participate in this mission because of the shared history of rule of law, freedom, and democracy that we all share. We look forward 
to continuing this dialogue, strengthening our ties, and building a future of peace, progress, and prosperity for our nation. As you journey back home, my brother, kindly convey our best wishes to the President, Mr. Voltaire, and the team members of the Transitional Presidential Council, and to our brothers and sisters in Haiti. Thank you very much. Please welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me first start by thanking you for hosting us. It feels so nice to be back in Nairobi, a country, a city that I consider almost a second home, having been here so many times before. But let me also thank you for your vision, for your leadership, and for your commitment. You know, it's important to remind that Haiti is a country of 12 million people hostage to a hand 